There are few people that spend more days sitting in the front seat of a helicopter than Mike Barney. From South America to Iceland to Alaska, Mike knows how to get it done. It all adds up and there is no substitute for experience in the big mountains. get out of the helicopter here and on a good year ski seven, eight thousand feet and that's something that I don't get the chance to do at the other places that I guide and dealing with that much relief you're dealing with huge temperature swings and different snowpack at the top of your run and the bottom of your run and it's an awesome challenge. When you go to set down on a 14,000 foot peak there's not a lot of room for error and he knows what's going on. He knows how to communicate with his pilot. Genio, la verdad que nos llevó por lugares muy copados, unas canaletas tremendas, supo encontrar muy bien la nieve, muy buena onda. I love that I work with Chilean folks and that I'm in Chile and I'm working with awesome, welcoming people and, and it feels like a big family really. Barney is a genuine dude. I mean, you see the look on his face when he steps off the helicopter on top of the skyscraper in downtown Santiago, and he's just as stoked as the clients. And I think that's one thing that I really appreciate about Mike is he's not only a true professional, but he really enjoys what he does. It's a pretty surreal experience for folks coming up here and landing on the top of the titanium 60 stories up and taking the elevator down and walking two blocks to your hotel. It's pretty amazing being out there in the Andes and then coming back to this. Nothing to complain about. Now we're gonna go out in Santiago, have a nice meal. Back out there again tomorrow. que es difícil encontrar en este mercado, en el mundo de los guías de él y esquí, una persona con un ego aterrizado. Puedo confiar mucho en él porque sé que sus decisiones están basadas en los hechos que él observa y no en alcanzar un desafío personal o, o algo que vaya motivaciones egoístas o del ego. All guides feel pressure especially after storms or, you know, if their clients are chomping at the bit, looking to get out there and ski, they've spent a lot of money and everyone feels those pressures. But the more experience you have, the more you understand that really in the end, it's just skiing and we're not curing cancer. We're not saving babies. We're, we're just trying to have fun. I think Alaska is the best skiing in the world. It's really good when it's really good and it's 
really bad when it's really bad. And in all skiers, in some way, we're, we're gamblers. We take these trips, we make these bookings, and, and then we show up and hope for the best. And working towards those epic days is what we're all doing. I think this was my fifth season guiding in Haynes. I guided in Valdez for about seven before that. I've sat through storms and had warm times in Alaska before, but um, in March, for a terrain all the way up like that, it was new to me, and I think we're seeing a lot more unfamiliar snow packs and unfamiliar type conditions up there, and just something we're gonna have to start dealing with, with climate change. Yeah, it's not always rainbows and butterflies out there, and Barney's not afraid to make that call. You know, that call when you say, you know what guys, it ain't happening today, we're going home. It's dangerous and not worth it right now. After sitting for five days and drinking beer and shooting guns and doing whatever, we just really had to tone back the slope angle and it wasn't classic Alaska skiing by any means, still a lot of fun, but that's part of the game. You know, when you go out there, you're essentially going into battle. And so you choose your partners wisely. I know he's gonna give everything he's got and he's gonna be safe, but he's also gonna take chances and make it happen because if we sit there with our tail between our legs and ski 25 degree slopes all day long, we're not gonna meet expectations. So it's up to us to make it happen and make it happen safely. Bringing people into the mountains and showing them these wild, exotic places and experience being in those places is really meaningful to me. And that's what I love most about guiding skiing. Guiding has really taught me patience more than anything and just understanding where people are coming from and that everybody doesn't understand the mountains like I do or you know everybody doesn't move around the mountains the same and I think that that's a huge virtue and it's helped me as a father with my daughters and just becoming more patient and really understanding that people need help and people need more than what I do to move around these mountains and showing them that and setting them up for success and hopefully have them enjoy being in the mountains and skiing powder as much as I do. I think Mike and I connect on a level based on family because Barney has to come home. He has a family to raise. He's not thinking about himself. He's thinking about others, the guests, his family, and the big picture. Sus niños son de la edad del mío, entonces ayudarnos en una relación de padres y estamos interesados en la familia de, de los otros. Creo que ayuda a entender que las decisiones que tomamos también están apoyadas por nuestras familias atrás. Yo respeto a Mike, sus decisiones. Y mis decisiones también las baso pensando en Mike y su familia. Yeah, I've thought about other jobs and maybe trying to spend more time closer to home, and and I really haven't found anything that I could replace this with. What I like to say is that the mountains are are like my wife and that I just listen to what they're telling me and, and do what I'm told. And that's worked, so I'm not gonna stray. <laughs>